Rolling shutter can be a big problem when using your camera's electronic shutter mode, but mechanical shutters use the same digital sensors. So how come they don't show any rolling shutter? I'm going to tell you why on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions on Adorama TV. If you've got a question, just go to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. If it's one that I think will help a lot of other photographers, I just might pick your question to answer here on a future show. This week, I've got a good question from Jeff S. And he wants to know, why does rolling shutter only happen with mirrorless cameras using an electronic shutter? On DSLRs or mirrorless using mechanical shutter, once the shutter opens, isn't the picture taken on the sensor using exactly the same process as mirrorless one line at a time? That's a great question, Jeff. And I'm going to explain what's actually happening here. Now, if you're not exactly sure what Jeff is asking, I did another video a couple of years ago about using a mechanical shutter versus using an electronic one. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to that video in the description below, but you know me by now, I'm going to give an overview so that we're all on the same page about this topic before I answer Jeff's question. Now, many of today's cameras give you the option of shooting with either a mechanical shutter or an electronic shutter. And when we say mechanical shutter, we're really talking about the two shutter curtains that move in front of the camera's digital sensor to block the light when you're making an exposure. Now, of course, I'm oversimplifying a bit. It's very complicated technology, but basically the shutter curtain opens and exposes the sensor or the film, if you're using a film camera, for the amount of time that you set as your shutter speed. Then it closes to block the light and the exposure is over. That's the end of taking your picture, right? Um, now on a DSLR, you use an optical viewfinder, which means you're looking through the lens with your own eyes. You're actually looking and you can see and that you're not looking at a screen or anything. You're actually just looking um, using a complicated system that uses a mirror to bounce the light up in between every exposure so that you can see through the lens. When you take a picture, the mirror flips up and out of the way, blocking your view temporarily so that there's a straight path for the light to hit the sensor. Then the curtain moves, exposing the sensor and recording your image. It's really an elegant way to do it. And this technology has been around quite a while, SLR cameras and now DSLR cameras in the digital world. And it can also be done incredibly fast. On the Canon 1DX Mark III, for example, you can shoot at 8,000th up to 16 times every second. That's pretty awesome technology, right? But an electronic shutter now is newer technology that only works in mirrorless cameras. As sensor tech has improved, we can now use electronic viewfinders instead of optical ones if you choose. That means you're looking at a little digital monitor, basically a little TV screen that shows what the camera is seeing through the lens as opposed to looking through the lens directly with your eyes using that whole mirror flip up system. That's going to give you some advantages. Like for example, you're going to have no blackout when you shoot because there's no mirror blocking the path of light. Some other advantages are that you can actually shoot in many cases more frames per second if you want to, because there are no physical parts to move. There's a limitation as to how fast those, that metal curtain can actually flip up out of the way. Um, and, and the mirror too, of course. And you can also shoot silently if you choose to. The electronic shutter doesn't make any noise. There are no moving parts, so it doesn't make noise. Now, on a mirrorless camera, the sensor is on, let's say, almost all of the time. If you can see a live image in your electronic viewfinder or on the back of the camera if you choose to shoot that way, which I usually don't, but uh, that is a way you can shoot, that's coming right from the sensor in real time. So when you take a picture, it just sort of activates the photo sites or the pixels and the processor inside the camera captures that moment in time. So Jeff asked about rolling shutter, and that is definitely a downside of using an electronic shutter. What happens is that the sensor that is capturing the light, it can't read the data, right? The light is data that's being collected on those photo sites, and it can't read that off of there. It can't capture that data from all of those photo sites at the exact same time. One day we might have what's called a global shutter available in our professional or consumer cameras, and that should actually work that way. But we're not quite there yet as the tech currently stands today in 2022. So when the camera's processor pulls that data off for each picture, it does it line by line. It basically is scanning down line by line. How fast it does that is called the readout speed. So imagine taking a picture of this little Manfrotto tripod. I love this little things so you can, Put these anywhere and it holds a good amount of weight. Um, 
If this thing isn't moving, it's not a problem because as the camera scans down the frame, no matter how fast or how slow that's happening, nothing has changed in the image. But if the tripod was moving very quickly in my frame, or if I was moving and trying to take a picture of the tripod that was staying still, an electronic shutter would actually be seeing the tripod at different moments in time on one frame. Again, that's not a problem if nothing's moving, but if the tripod was traveling like this, then as the lines were scanned from top to bottom, it's going to be distorted and not look natural. So it captures the top line here, then the next line down, then the next line down, and the next line down, all the way to the bottom. And this is all just for one frame, one single photo. So the tripod is going to be warped in the final image. It's going to look like it's leaning because the top of the image was captured here and the bottom of the image was captured when it was all the way over here, right? You see this more often uh, when you try to take pictures out of the window of a moving car, for example. Light poles and other tall objects like buildings are actually going to be leaning over, uh, maybe a little bit, maybe a lot, depending on how fast you're moving. So that's what an electronic shutter does. But Jeff asks why this doesn't happen when using the mechanical shutter. I mean, the image, the image is still being captured onto a digital sensor that scans the light one line at a time. However, here's the answer. The big difference is that the mechanical shutter cuts off the light from hitting the sensor much faster than the sensor readout speed. So for example, if you were shooting at a thousandth of a second, that shutter curtain is going to close very quickly. It's going to block off the light hitting the sensor very, very quickly. Electronic shutters are getting faster and faster because better processors in the newest cameras can dump the data off quicker and quicker, can read it and clear it very quickly. But the readout speed on even the newest cameras today is somewhere between a 60th of a second up to maybe 180th of a second. It's still considerably slower than the amount of time that the mechanical shutter uses to cut off the light. So even with that slow readout speed, the light has already been cut off and the sensor isn't being exposed anymore. So that thing can move as slow as it wants once that light is not hitting the sensor anymore. It doesn't matter at that point, right? It's already cut off. So the chances of seeing any rolling shutter in that case are much, much lower. Every current digital camera has rolling shutter. I don't care what the manufacturers tell you, everyone does. But the faster the readout speed, the less you'll see it. And you might only have some warping in the fastest moving objects, like a golf ball coming off the club or something like that. In theory, even a film camera has some distortion in the images. As that shutter curtain moves in front of the film, it's exposing it from one edge of the film, moving down until it's all the way at the other edge. But just like with the mechanical shutter on a digital camera, it's so darn fast that you really wouldn't see any significant warping. You're only going to notice it when using a fully electronic shutter on a camera with a relatively slow readout speed, which most of them have at this point. Um, they are getting much, much better, and it really isn't noticeable in the newest cameras. Now, there is a third mode in some cameras called electronic first curtain. And it's kind of a hybrid mode that starts the exposure just like the electronic shutter, but then cuts off the light using the fast mechanical shutter. And there are some pros and cons of shooting that way, but I'm going to save that for another video if one of you actually sends in that question, hint, hint. Um, so you can get that in if you want to know more about that. So Jeff, I hope that makes sense. Um, what are you all shooting and why? Are you using electronic shutter? Are you using mechanical shutter? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious what situations you're using them for and how it's working out. Otherwise, I want you to keep those questions coming. I'll do my best to keep answering. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. I'm going to see you back here next time. I'll have a brand new question right here on Ask David Bergman.